also in place um, prior to obviously the 1902 remodeling. So what happens is they come in here and have to introduce this arch in 1902. So this is 1902. And what must have happened is that this was designed and they had this in mind and had it sent off to, you know, sent off the drawings for carving and all of that. And then when they actually came to do the work, started hacking at the wall and discovered this column or this element here in the corner. And why I say I reckon it's an afterthought is you'd imagine you would try and align some of these elements with some of these elements if you were designing something new. So my conclusion is that they found, or they designed this, had it all carved, brought it on site, started putting it in place, hacked away the wall and discovered this nice cut stone in the wall. And then somebody put it together that, well, if there's a vertical joint on the outside there, and there's a vertical joint on the outside up there, there must be another one up there and the same at both sides. So these were exposed. Now, in the exposing of these, you actually had a monument that was here. And you have to move that. So that now goes over there. So that's the Reverend William Cosgrave. His uh, uh, monument was over, right? was over here at this side. And when they took this out, there was no room for it, so I had to put it over there. And there was also one at this side, and that's down at the right hand side. I think it's uh, was it Ricky, is it? Or the Rinsy, the sorry. But you can see it there. And now you, you question why was there space there? As in, why was there two spaces there that they hadn't had monuments there? Well, what I actually had was a cathedral there, where the bishop's throne was. And it was right in front of that window. And that was an 1817 element, nice Georgian proportions, a sounding board above a roof, and four very nice columns around that, and up on a platform. And it was lit from the back. So you can imagine the light shining through the south side of the church during the day and the bishop sitting there, uh, the light shining all around him. Um, but what do you do with an uh, uh, early 19th century cathedral when you start taking it apart? Well, you start creating a plant stand. Okay. So this is one of the columns from 1817. And three more of them are actually in the chapter, so we'll look at them after a while. And they recycle them and use them here. Now, here's a photograph. This is from his, this is from his throne. It is, yes. And you can see it there. You can see it there on the side. So, um, at least they're in the church. <laughs> now, you can also see the box pews there. You can also see that large window at the east end of the church that I was saying that was modified. So it was one large window, and I mean, it might have had something of tracery there, you can see it in place, but it was definitely quite different to what's there at the moment. You also have a flat ceiling. The ceiling has been completely modified here, but they've used, you, you know, um, they've used this dental um, truss, but it's quite medieval in style or that. I mean, they've, they've gone to a lot of effort, but that's a completely new roof. Now, I don't know, can you, see, you probably can't see people right underneath it, but if you were to follow the line of the bottom underside of those trusses across, they actually cut across the arch, which shouldn't really happen in a medieval church. The arch should be dropped ever so slightly that they align. So it's not quite right, as in this arch is probably just a little bit too high for the, the space that's here. Now, when they're doing all of this, and they rip out all the box pews, and they rip out the choir because it's all too old and it's all dated and all of that, well, you need to shop around for new elements or a new choir that suits the new layout. So St. Canis's are doing work at the time in Kilkenny and they're ripping out all of their choir, which is not in all that long. It's only in within the last 40, 50 years. And it all comes here. So these elements are recycled from St. Canis's Cathedral in Kilkenny. And they're all uh, Victorian, probably pitch pine um, um, elements and they're all um, stained to look like mahogany or whatever or staying to make it look darker at least. But that's where they're from. Then the altar was pushed back. The baptismal font, which was here, is now moved to the back. And the baptismal font is in the um, Norman style, so it is actually, it's Victorian, but it's actually referencing the site, I suppose, that's here. You can actually see it, um, it's right up here, it's actually around, probably here, in this photograph. The baptismal font is just up there. 
can see it's just behind the stove. But you, oh, sorry, I, never mind that. The two stoves are also visible in that. Can you see the two stoves in the centre of the church? And the flue is going right up and out through the roof. And in the external photographs of the same period, you can just see these little tiny uh, top hats just on the, on the ridge line, two of them. So that's how that was lit. So it's quite narrow. You can imagine the pews were quite narrow. It was hard silver that were revealed. Yes. These are from the medieval. They're 13th century. They're 13th century. Yes. Uh, they're so framed in the transept. No? They're framed frame in the transept. So you can imagine the two arch or the two sides of the arch start from the top of those. So it's a huge arch. And it can't be very, I mean, if you were to bring it up to the ceiling level now, just draw an arch there, it's a very flat arch. And that wasn't a flat arch, that was a pointed arch. So it goes right up. So it's much higher than the, um, the uh, eaves level that we see right now. I mean, it's much, much higher. And that kind of decoration, that kind of rosette on top of the kind, yes. is that comparable with a similar... It is, it's taking a lot of on the constant at the time. He is using what they were using in medieval times. It's not the same stone, but it's very similar. So it's probably, um, it could be French, I'm not quite sure. We'd have to do tests on it for that to see where it came from. He was involved with the uh, reordering of St. Mary's Church in Enniscorti as well, just prior to that. So he's involved with quite a lot of uh, work in County Wexford, this fuller in 1902. So I'm not quite sure. Um, certain elements that he brought here are 13th century, but I mean, he did that balustrade across the top, which is pseudo-Georgian, and you know, he kind of did some things that looked a kind of Georgian and some things that looked um, kind of medieval, so I'm not sure what he was up to. But you can see that balustrade was introduced. That was actually a solid balustrade in an earlier photograph. Um, obviously different building regulations, they've had to heighten it at a later stage, as in there's a new um, rail put in at a higher level. So there's a door behind the organ. Uh, that's how you enter um, that space there. Now the um, choir, as I said, is in the right location. All of this, so you can see all of these arches or this arcade, and that's all medieval. And I was saying outside that uh, the, the painting of it makes it look contemporary, perhaps, but it's probably stone. I mean, it should be stone. There's no reason to say why it shouldn't. Uh, he's copied that detail at the top of this window here. So this window, the top part, is in three parts. Uh, above this window is all 1902, but he's referencing these, and you can see that. Now, this is the window that I said has been modified, but if you look at it, he's used very narrow. This is his early English um, side window, which he, he does exist everywhere, but also exists in the room out beyond the building, where you have all of these windows grouped together. So he probably thought that the window that was in place looked too late for the, the um, building and decided to actually introduce something that looked narrower and more perpendicular. And you can see that there, so there's five windows introduced. Now you can see those two odd Vasita windows at the top. They don't really make a lot of sense. And they're also sloping up the way, which is as in, the, as in the heads of them. I mean, they have the room to actually open them out that they were actually, um, you know, fanned or tapered in every direction, but they're actually tapering downwards, which is like now, when we come up here, you can see what I'm saying to you about the um, two sinks, the two medieval sinks. So one of them for washing vessels, and one of them for washing hands, and they were always adjacent to the altar, or near the altar, which means that the altar had to be here. In the if this is 13th century, they, they didn't bring these things around. They, this was only used in the 13th century. 13th century altar, they didn't shorten the church in that direction, they shortened it in this direction. So it starts to make more sense now that this is in the original position and the end of the church has moved. So you can see them there. And it was that the water would exit out onto consecrated ground. Right. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's there. Now you would often have a, um, a sedilla, sedilla, which would be at the other side, where you would have three arches and or two where you could seat people, but they don't seem to be in this church, and I don't think they ever were because the window slopes and everything are too low. Uh, but it's quite, I mean, by medieval cathedral standards, it's actually quite a narrow, small cathedral anyway. I know it has been shortened and brought, uh, brought in quite a lot, but if you compare it to um, even, but say, Douche Gabby or something like that, I mean, it's much broader. Uh, this is actually quite a narrow church anyway, so you can imagine that certain elements like this might not have existed. 
Are, the, are these windows uh, original ones? Yeah, they are. They, they appear to be, yes. So yeah. They're quite like the ones in the end, what might be the They are, they're very like them. Yeah. Very, very like them. And these are the ones that had the quattrofoil window above them again. Mm -hmm. So there would have been another window above that, as in a uh, four circles intersecting. And, and are these on either side? Yeah, these were here as well, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and the, um, the stained glass there, the anomalous piece on the left one, that's just a small insertion into it. Yeah, no, right, right, okay. very end one. That's just oh, sorry. the side window there. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. And this one here, oh, yeah, it's peculiar. That's why it's, um, it's quite late looking, as in it. From a bomb cathedral movement. Was it? Oh, there were parts of the same as people sent to the different cathedrals. Oh, very good. So that's why it's. Yes. So the one on the right is from London and it was put in around 1903, so just around the time that they were uh, doing the work on the church. But the other one is later and it's actually um, uh, an Irish um, station. Kate O'Brien. It is, yeah. exactly. Kate yeah. O'Brien, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes, on her store. And she um, designed that. Uh, she's famous for her stained glass work. She died in 1960s so that. She was after Harry Clark or something. She, yes, yeah. she actually, um, uh, on, is it on Tour Clura? The, uh, on Tour Clura. Yeah. Or Tour Clura. That she yeah. actually ended up buying that from Sarah Purser and continuing on the work until she died. And her last commission was two windows for Aris and Neutron and they were never finished. Okay. De yes. had commissioned them from her. But, um, she, um, did the work on these, and that's 1925, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, well, again, these might, uh, Sandra just mentioned pieces came from somewhere, but I mean, this is 1902, but these are, well, they look late, Victorian, actually. I've just seen one that's the writer, Paul of Shane. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Say again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of them is Shane. One of them is Shane. Now, they, uh, they look late. Then they're quite, um, they look like they're Edwardian or an arts and mm -hmm. crafts kind of um, period, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is interesting, the shaven guy. There's a quite, you know, marble-like quality to it almost. Whereas the others are darker. Oh, was yeah. it? Was that it? You're more up to date than I am, am I saying? How would I was outside, take the ice things. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. If you uh -huh. notice that outside, maybe, the, the cover I put on the outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does, it's yes, it's filthy, yes, yes. And at least it's protecting it, but it's yeah. not, it's not, it's, it's quite dirty. And there's obviously a gap between it, there's flies and all sorts of uh, things in there. Is there anything unusual about the stonework at the top? It's almost, it's to me like, what, he should, it, it was a paper yeah. covering stone. Yeah, well, if you look at the, um, this kind of fluting that's on the side of this, you might have carried that into the art a little bit better. Yeah. So it meets it badly. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure if that's the stonemason now or the architect, but you can see there that this fluting runs right up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's just a really bad junction. Mm -hmm. Now, this window, as I was saying to you, these are stacked on top of each other, but it's quite flimsy. And you can even see up on the very left, the come in one and go follow that up. It's all after moving at some point. Yeah. So this is it? Has it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes. it's moved slightly, so it is too flimsy really, those. These should be much longer elements, I mean they're only about six inches. I mean they should have done that in stages of a couple of feet or something like that and had metal pins between them yeah. and that you would have, that you could stack them right on top of each other. Are they vulnerable then? Uh, they probably are, yeah. Now I'm not sure how structural they are, they're not holding up an awful lot above them, which is probably a disadvantage in one way because if they're holding more they would be compressed, mm. but they're actually... Um, Probably not in great nakes. Out of all the things that needed a bit of work in the church, is something from 1902. Yeah, that's fascinating. The facial work is shoddy, but you can. I, when we walk down the church, even if you look back towards that window on the left, you can see how the wall is leaning quite dramatically. So the walls are leaning outwards, and you notice it with the. Uh, even that monument on the right with the obelisk on top, the first monument on the right, they've packed it out behind it and it gets thicker as it goes up towards the top. You see that? Mm -hmm. The stonework on the right hand, the first one on the right. And it means that the walls are leaning dramatically outwards. And that's why he brought in the arch. But if you were an engineer and you were thinking about how would you stop the walls from spreading, 
think you might have just introduced two buttresses yes, yes. on the outside, one side or side, and just push it back. Mm -hmm. but, um, so that's what he thought this arch would do, is going to bind, bind the building to get the two arches together. Yes. Um, and a question, you know, about the painting. The church in medieval times have been painted. It probably was painted, yes. Would have yes. frescoes on it? Uh, they would have had frescoes on that, in this area at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is, does, does look quite Moroccan, yeah. yeah. And they painted over stonework in that in medieval times. I mean, we think it's a tarpillage now, but they did. Yeah. So it's not, it's, uh, it's not incorrect to have those paintings. I mean, it's probably layers and layers and layers of paint on that if you were to, unless it was removed in 1902. But, you know, it's in, there should be layers of paint on those. Or well, the outside of the paint as well. Yeah, the outside is probably washed. whitewashed, yeah. yes. So there could be frescoes behind on that painting? Yes, yeah, 13th century. It's probably like the late 13th century. Yeah. So there could be frescoes behind it. Well, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the, those, when those funerary monuments and everything were, were moved around, it's likely that they plastered over everything. And even if there was something there, they probably scratched it or did whatever to get a key for the, the new plaster. So I know it's a similar age church, but in the north of Spain in Victoria. Yeah. They pulled off the plaster. And, it was okay. and there was, they just cut pigments. Oh yeah. Were, and then they, they, they took more care with it. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. revealed. Well, it's likely that there is something there because yeah. even if they hacked up the wall, they didn't remove everything. And this, this was never without a roof. I mean, for a short period when they were re-roofing it, but there was never derelict mm -hmm. since its construction, mm -hmm. since the 13th mm -hmm. century. This was damaged, yes, in the 15th or 16th century, but it was rebuilt quite quickly. So it's likely that there's something even from the 16th century behind the plaster, or in the walls at least. So if you were ever trying to get a sample, I know you were talking yesterday, Ronan, about getting a sample of plaster, mortar, yeah. or mortar, should I say, if you could get behind that, yeah. at some point inside, this is going to be likely to be older than all the repointing on the outside. You can also see that there's a little bit of movement in that arch, just to the left and to the right. Yeah, they are just the start where it starts to arch. Oh, you see the columns. It doesn't seem to make sense with the arch because an arch distributes the weight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's going to push the wall down. It should. It, it's doing the wrong thing. Actually. It's actually holding. Them yeah, together. he's saying that it's. Uh, but his report was that it was holding it together. That it was tying it together. But I mean, if the arch was lower and you had more masonry joining the walls, mm -hmm. it would make more sense. Yeah. But if they just put in a beam across and put ties or something, or patras plates or something on the outside. The, um, now, whether before the tower was put in, whether there was a window or anything above where the organ is, I mean, it would be likely that there was a window at that end of the church at a high level. Again, uh, we'd all need picks or something and starting off plaster and see um, <laughs> is there any evidence of that. Except, but is, is that not going extending much further back? Well, sorry, when they built the new gable, oh, okay, it's right. likely that they brought a window with them, you know, to um, light up that space. So when does that reconstruction take? It's 1585, I think. 1585, after it gets damaged, 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 damaged by the Yes. Yeah. And is that when they took down the trans transept? It is, yes. Yeah. 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 Transepts were taken out of the 19th century, yes. Yeah.